look what I've got here. So I ended up getting the sort of original OEM um, mounting. So it consists of the two little rubber grommets at the bottom and then two plastic inserts with quarter inch square um, openings. So a lot, a lot of the standard Dorman stuff that you get at Napa parts or whatever don't fit, but uh, got the original ones and uh, I'm ready to roll. Look at that, that's my original license plate and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to uh, continue using that. So awesome, happy that's done. So there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Let's zoom over here first. So I've re finished this surface um, on this ashtray and then I'd cut out this section in the middle here and then what goes on is this control unit goes goes in there so what have we got here you've got uh, on the top we've got the blower um, sort of air control sort of infinitely adjustable airspeed air conditioning level and then left and right seat heaters and then the brake servo which is adjust the amount of uh, brake assist and then the switches on the bottom you've got the ignition so you flick that to turn it on, a little green light turns on start is a momentary push kill kills the engine, so if I leave the kill on for instance and I hit the start button it'll turn the motor over and do things like you know precharge the oil pressure and stuff which is good and it's just a way for me to turn the motor over without having to, to actually fire the ignition and then uh, air conditioning, so a little blue light turns on nitrous enable and then um, when a little red light turns on then purge is the um, you know clear the air out of the nitrous lines so I haven't finished quite wiring it up yet but uh, this is a nasty thing having to nibble out and uh, everything as you can see it's jammed in there but it fits so um, and I just made labels you know, these are um, using a, um, a just a waterproof um, uh, labels that I just got printed up and then cut them out and stuck it on um, so that's coming together, that, that's a lot of work actually. Alright, so the old air conditioning compressor there, about 150 watts of electrical power producing a little under 400 watts of uh, cooling power and um, I've decided to try something a little different so this I got from a Chinese firm uh, Boyard and this is a 12 volt variable speed compressor so that's variable speed as well so you can turn up and down the RPM and get more or less power and this is about three times the power so it produces um, about 3000 BTUs of cooling uh, whereas this is around 1350 or less so it's about two and a half times I guess I, it has, it's tested at 3300 RPM for the 3000 BTU and it'll go up to 3700 RPM using this controller so I can bring this from 2500 um, up to 3700 RPM and at 3700 RPM it's going to take around 30 35 amps current draw and produce uh, um, you know close to 400 watts of uh, electrical consumption but cranking out 900 plus watts of uh, um, of cooling which is 3000 BTU so um, the difference is uh, larger diameter tubing required and um, so what I'm going to do is uh, um, I'm going to use um, what's called male o-ring fittings that I'll epoxy on here so I'll have a number six on the discharge port number eight on the suction port and that'll go into um, reduced barrier hose so it's just uh, it's lighter hose and it's got less wall thickness to it and it um, is more flexible and just easier to route so I'll have a number six hose running out to the um, condenser and uh, and then from there to the expansion valve and then to the evaporator and then number eight return um, that's the way I'm going to run it and I've got a larger um, uh, condenser I'll show you that in a sec as well so this stuff is coming together. I have, I've ordered a whole bunch of fittings. It'll take me another week or two to get everything together and then I'm going to bench the system again 
and see how well it performs relative to the other testing I did with the smaller compressor. So the difference in weight, um, this all in with the controller is 12 pounds, this all in with the controller is 16 pounds, so you're adding 4 and a bit pounds, um, but you know, you're getting a substantial amount of increased cooling, and I think the other system would be a bit marginal. So I think at 3000 BTUs I'm going to be happy. So anyway, I'll show you the um, new uh, condenser core in a sec. Yeah, so here's the, um, like I'm using these Permacool oil coolers just because they're, it's hard to get the right size for what I need in my custom application. So these things are super light. This thing only weighs a few pounds. It's an inch and a half thick, seven inches wide twice the length or twice the surface area of the smaller ones so I will still use just one of these it turns out I can't fit two of them in or anything larger so this will be my uh, evaporator with my thermal expansion valve and uh, and then instead of using the same thing for the um, condenser I'm using the larger one it, the, the simple reason is the more heat I can remove from the refrigerant after the compressor the better so what feeds post dryer into the bottom of the thermal expansion valve um, instead of running in the 50 or 45 degrees Celsius hopefully it will be you know close to 40 degrees Celsius so it comes out of the compressor pretty hot run it through the condenser cool it down and then this has a, an easier job and uh, you'll get more efficiency out of the system so I'd love to have like a, a much larger or even a custom evaporator with with really small capillary tubes um, I think this is gonna work out okay though we'll see we'll see um, should get nice and cold and uh, two weeks we'll find out